let me show you how I did it. Ew. Hey, I'm gonna try to take this Jessam Master R lift and this spindle head and mount it to my TOT sled. Hope this works, check it out. Ooh. When I pulled it out of the box, I just knew this thing was of super high quality. And this is the time when I thought, oh my gosh, this thing is serious, strong, powerful, and gonna do the job perfectly. Then I started to think maybe it's just too heavy for the TOT sled. Hey, so my first impressions are, this thing is serious in size. I feel like it's gonna handle a lot better um, on the router sled and put out more power for the work I do. Um, not to mention this router lift. First, um, first impression is that it's serious, it is heavy duty steel, it is not gonna rattle. Now I've used the Festool OF, I think 2700, let's look behind me, or 2200. I've used that on the router sled before and I feel like it's just not enough power. Plus I'm worried about owning it all the time. Whereas that is like $1,200, this is like five, $600. So I would rather burn this out than burn that out, even though that can be repaired. All right, looking at this, the first problem that I need to solve is this will be mounted upside down. So how do I use this crank and this mechanism um, while it is upside down? Because it's got these nice nifty um, spindle lock right here, and this works really, really well. Um, to lock this spindle up and down, it feels really stable. It's not going anywhere. But when this is upside down, how is it gonna work? I'm not sure. But I'm willing to push the limits on it because man, it is smooth. A much more exact um, raising and lowering of uh, the, the spindle head or the cutter head. The way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna bore a hole into this threaded rock and I am going to put this threaded insert in it. That threaded insert is the right size for the crank. I am not sure how that's gonna work, um, but I feel like boring a hole in this is not all that risky because this will just continue to work anyways. Um, putting this in and kind of securing it in um, with this uh, over the counter um, at Home Depot permanent supposedly thread locker compound, hopefully that works um, to get this in there nice and stable. And I think it will, when I put this in it, I don't think I'm gonna have the issue. What you don't actually see in the video is me breaking five drill bits trying to bore out this hole for the threaded insert that's going to happen in a second. That was tough and frustrating, but got the job done and edited the video so it looked like it was a breeze. Oh, and I know the tap is crooked. That was a mistake, but got the job done. So I just finished boring out the hole. That was a lot harder than I had planned it to be use the tap in dice, um, specifically the tap. Now I am going to secure um, this piece in there. I'm gonna work on the spindle lock, so I'm gonna pull this lock nut off and I am going to replace it with this threaded coupler. On the threaded coupler, I will then put this threaded screw in it um, with the same um, Allen key head as the threaded rod that raises and lowers the spindle. And just a heads up, I have used this about three times since I made this video and that permanent um, Loctite is doing its job very well. Those threads are not so So now that I've retrofitted the shaft that raises and lowers the router lift and the locking mechanism so that I can use it from the top side, I need to somehow figure out how to get this on there. I tell you what, cutting through the steel on this TOT sled 
uh, router mount was really, really tough as well. That is some thick, strong, stable, durable steel. So I put the new spindle on, it's connected, I've got the controller connected, but I have no real dust collection on this, and I want to use that. So I've got this piece for a vacuum that I'm going to attach right here, then I've got this 45, I'm going to attach to it, and then I'm going to attach this PVC pipe with this mag port in it, and hopefully that works and does a great job. Now you'll see me mount this dust collector right here and you're going to see it in the videos that it actually doesn't work very well. I think I need a bigger hole um, for it to suck the dust up from the tabletop itself. Um, but in general, it's taking down the small particulate, which is uh, the biggest need for it, not the big stuff. The big stuff can easily be swept up. It's the small stuff that gets in your lungs um, that makes you cough. That's the problem. Hey, my first impression of running this up and down this table is it is amazing. I am not worried about burning out this spindle like I was on the Festool 2700. Um, and I love the fact that I can easily moderate um, and ratchet up the power on it. Super easy to control. This little knob right here stays in its correct spot, able to adjust that perfectly. Turns on, turns off very well. I am just overall pleased. If you have a TOT sled or any type of router sled and you're willing to drop some coin on, um, on this setup, go for it. I would highly recommend it. It's a little bit of labor, actually a lot of labor to get it rocking and rolling and get it set up, but um, I'm very pleased with it. I especially love how easy it is to raise and lower and how precisely I can do that um, to make sure that I don't take off too much on the table surface. So. Uh, I'm going to take a few more passes so you can check it out and get a good look at how it works. Now after running it up and down a table a couple of times I realized is it absolutely sturdy enough, sturdy enough where I trust my employee to run it and do it successfully and uh, get this job done really, really well. Hey, thanks for watching and please subscribe.